From the School of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, this is Carolina Week. Good evening, I'm Michael Handy. And I'm Brad Broders. Welcome to the February 17th edition of Carolina Week. Our top story tonight, winter weather hits Carolina. Carolina Week reporter Alex Lawson was one of the few people out on campus Monday, other than the cleanup crews. Here we go again. Chapel Hill gets hit with another ice storm. It all started early Sunday morning. This time, Chapel Hill received more than an inch of sleet and freezing rain, which made getting to campus tough, unless you had one of these. The ice here is too hard to make a snow angel, and it's even too hard to make a good snowball. But the one thing that it did do was get classes canceled on Monday. The last time university officials canceled classes was January 2000, when Chapel Hill got 22 inches of snow. Provost Robert Shelton says the university made the right decision this time around. Well, if you have a class at 9 and 11 and 2 today, and your 9 and 11 have been canceled, are you really going to show up for that 2 o'clock? And we thought, considering that the temperature is not getting above freezing, the main roads were getting better, but the side roads were not, we felt just making it a clean sweep and canceling classes for the day was the right decision. Staff members like Adriel Williams are stepping up to clear the way for classes tomorrow. This is not something uh, which is normally done by the housekeeping staff. Years ago, that, that was a part of the job, but in recent years, I don't recall anybody at housekeeping cleaning any steps. <laughs> the university was closed for three days in 2000. School officials fully expect things to be back to normal Tuesday after only a one-day shutdown this time. In Chapel Hill, I'm Alex Lawson, Carolina Week. Provost Shelton says the university and the town work together better this time to keep transportation moving compared to the gridlock caused by December's ice storm. With no morning classes on Monday, students on South Campus hit the trails by the Dean Dome Sunday night, the sledding trails. About 100 students took advantage of the ice-covered hills at Manning and Bowles Drive. The fun went well into the morning as sledders enjoyed the slick services until about 2 a.m. But the fun wasn't without some danger. Boulder sledders tried ironing boards and even chairs. Ouch! At about 1 a.m., campus police arrived and confiscated campus signs used as sleds. But for the most part, students enjoyed themselves, knowing morning classes were canceled and the night was theirs for sledding and wintry fellowship. Moving on from the sledding trails to the campaign trail, when it's the day before two student body election runoffs, you'd expect to see the pit full of campaigning. But not on Monday. The wintry weather left the pit almost empty. There are runoff elections for both student body president and senior class officers on Tuesday. With classes canceled, there's almost no one campaigning, and even if they were, there aren't many students to check them out. But the weather isn't stopping senior class officer candidates George Lehman and Doug Melton from continuing their camp out in the quad. I was a Boy Scout growing up, so um, I'm pretty used to the, the camp. And Doug, on the other hand, I had to give him a few tips and pointers. Cause first time he came out here with boxers and a t-shirt. And that's not really, you can't, you can't really acclimate to 19 degrees wearing that. George Lehman is a camper, all right, and lately he's been a loner, too. Most of the candidates didn't get to do any campaigning or camping either Sunday or Monday, including the two remaining SBP candidates. Last week, there were five candidates for student body president, four on the official ballot, and one write-in. After the vote last Tuesday, the field was narrowed to two. Matt Tepper was the top vote-getter with little more than 35% of the 7,206 votes cast. Shang Shen joined Tepper in the runoff by pulling in nearly 25% of the vote. We're joined now on the eve of the runoff by Matt Tepper and Shang Shen. Matt, we'll start with you. So what has the winter weather in the past two days done to your campaign? <laughs> well, we definitely haven't been able to get out there like we have in the past. Um, we weren't in the pit today, and uh, you know, I, I would have rather to, you know, I would have liked to be in the pit just talking to students and um, everything. But I, I think I, you know, I'm still doing door to door and still going out and talking to people as much as possible. So it, it's been interesting. <laughs> Okay, now you got the, um, the most votes in the election before, right. but now Shang Shen got all of the endorsements of the other candidates. What are you doing to try to counteract that? Well, I mean, it's just gonna, it's gonna be interesting. We'll see what happens. Um, it's gonna be a tight race, definitely. I mean, I, I came into this thinking it was gonna be tough. All the candidates were really, really qualified and really good. So we'll see what happens on Tuesday. 
All right, well, good luck. We're going to toss you. it over to Brad now and Shang Shen. All right, Shang. Now, you've been stranded in your apartment for two days. <laughs> yeah. uh, what have you been able to do campaign-wise, uh, you know, not being able to get out as much? Well, definitely the campaign manager who lives on campus has been doing a brunt of organizing, you know, the door-to-door -door programs and everything. But however, I've been working on talking with people online, um, sending emails and such like that. I think that's just as important as, as getting your name out and actually talking to people as well. Right. Now, um, talk about uh, what uh, Michael was just saying. Talk about those endorsements. Uh, you, you were behind in the, in the first election, but how, how important do you think that these um, you know, two candidates endorsing you will be? Uh, do you think it's enough to, to jump over and prevail? I hope so. I really do. Um, I think that uh, it's, it shows if, if two candidates that were in the student body race that didn't, weren't so fortunate to actually be in the runoff, they endorse somebody, I think it should show the student body that, that the person that they did endorse is, is really qualified for a position. Okay, the day before the election, you're about to go to the DTH, but here in Carolina Week, uh, this is kind of your last chance to say, why would you make the ideal student body president candidate? Because I, I just create the perfect balance. I think I can, I can talk with students and make policies at the same time while um, having fun and being a professional at the same time. And I'm very visible and open and approachable to, to students everywhere. So that's why I think they have an upper hand. Well, best of luck to you and Matt Tepper. And this... That does it for this. Oh, for I'm sorry. Question, actually. So, uh, Tepper, just tell us really quickly what makes what sets you apart from Shang Shen in this election. Um, well, I mean, I think we're we're both qualified, like I said. But uh, I've had the most experience over the past three years. I've been involved throughout um, all all levels of the university, and uh, also I'm just really enthusiastic. I have a great platform that we've been researching. So, um, hopefully, students will really connect with what we have to offer. All right. Well, good luck again. Thank you. Well, that does it for this edition of Carolina Week. Be sure to catch Election Returns coverage Tuesday night from 1030 to 1130. Stay tuned. Sports Spotlight is next. Have a good night. Properly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution. But more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks. Environment metal defense, get green. By keeping my car regularly tuned, I save money on gas and repairs. That also means cleaner air. You know, feels good to help save the cash planet. Environment metal defense, get green. For more tips, go to getgreen.com. When you buy disposable and overpackaged products for your home, you're really saying, hmm, I'm fine with depleting natural resources. Pollute our air and water. Energy, wasted. People tell you, hey, go for less packaging. Check out reusables. Buy stuff in bulk. Well, you tell them, no thanks. I'd rather throw it all away. Buy smart, waste less, save more. Welcome to this week's edition of Sports Spotlight. I'm Aaron Mesmer. Coming up, the men's tennis team is playing well when they get the chance to play, and the softball team's weekend was cut short. First, we'll start with basketball. Just one week away from their showdown at number two Duke, Carolina's women's basketball team looked to tackle the mission at hand against Florida State. Mission accomplished. The heels came out steady early on against the Seminoles, pounding it inside for Senna Candace Sutton, who finished with 12 points. But this night was mainly about senior Coretta Brown. The guard led all scorers with 22 points, helping UNC jump out to a 36-28 halftime lead. Student body president finalist Shang Shin, obviously impressed. But back to the game, where the Knolls close to 53-48 to late in the second half. But Brown makes the FSU defense just look silly in the closing minutes, and UNC downs Florida State 72-56. Neither rain, nor sleet, nor gloom of night could stop Carolina's women's basketball team from playing ball, as the Tar Heels took on Clemson Saturday, Sunday in Chapel Hill in the midst of the worst winter storm of the season. In the first half, Carolina has trouble containing Clemson's Chrissy Floyd, who ends the half with 15 points. 
The game is all tied up at 42 to start the second half, but Candace Sutton, Nikita Bell, and Coretta Brown combined for 24 points in the second. And Carolina rolls to victory 70 to 66. After falling to Virginia by seven in January, Carolina's men's basketball team hoped for a reversal of fortune Wednesday as the Heels took on the Cavaliers at the Dean Dome. And what's the best way to build a lead quickly? Make shots from behind the arc. Not one, not two, but six different Tar Heels get in on the three-point action, helping the Heels to a 37-28 lead at the half. Coach Gillen is not pleased with his team's performance, but Cavalier Travis Watson leads a UVA comeback. Virginia pulls even midway through the second half, but on the shoulders of Raymond Felton and a revitalized Rashad McCants, Carolina crushes the Cavs, 81-67. McCants says Wednesday's effort was one of his better games. It's probably the best of recent, but uh, I know, you know, I haven't played to my potential of yet, and um, once I do that, you know, I'll, I'll feel more comfortable about playing a game of basketball. Carolina couldn't keep the momentum against Clemson on Saturday, dropping the game 80 to 77. Clemson's Edward Scott scored 25 points, including 18 in the second half to lead the Tigers. Raymond Felton had a chance to tie the game with a three in the last 10 seconds, but couldn't get it to fall as the Heels record falls to 13 and 11. The women's tennis team is back on track after losing two straight matches. The Heels defeated 13th ranked William & Mary 4-3 on Saturday. The two teams split the six singles matches, but Carolina had already taken the doubles point earlier in the match to give the Heels a victory. After six straight matches away from Chapel Hill, the Heels get to return home for their next four. Wintry weather affects more than just classes and roads. As Casey Hart explains, snow has been one of the few forces able to stop Carolina's men's tennis team. Many Carolina students are struggling to deal with ice from the weekend snowstorm. But if you think driving on ice is tough, try playing tennis on it. Okay, so the Carolina men wouldn't have been playing on ice-covered courts like these, but a snowstorm in Maryland postponed their ACC opener Saturday. But when they've been able to play, the defending league champs have been winning. They sport a 3-1 record and a number 18 ranking. The undefeated doubles team of Nick Monroe and Tristan Minion has led the way. Monroe says the pair gelled quickly. We've never played doubles together until this year, and once this year came around, we, it was just, it's just something where when you find a partner, and you, you know, it's easy to click with somebody. Also undefeated is number three singles player Daniel Pinchbeck, who despite an elbow injury, earned this year's first conference player of the week on it. Pinchbeck plans to play through the pain. We know for a fact it can't get any worse, but we're not sure if we can get it to 100% if I continue to play. Minion is ranked 17th nationally and has set some lofty goals. Hopefully making the NCAA at the end, personally, and uh, for the team, uh, maybe hopefully another ACC ring. Monroe has even bigger plans. Um, I mean, we're good enough to be top 10, top 5, and um, you know we're looking to make the Sweet 16 and uh, just go from there. The Heels just might do that well, if weather permits. In Chapel Hill, I'm Casey Hart. Carolina Week Sports. The Heels are scheduled to, uh, to take on Richmond and in, in Richmond to face Virginia Commonwealth on Wednesday. Well, Carolina's baseball season is just about to get underway, but with the weather, Delaware State came south Monday and brought the weather with them. So unfortunately, the game was canceled, and the Heels will play four games in five days as they take on Seton Hall in a three-game series starting Friday. Well, that does it for this week's edition of Sports Spotlight. Tune in next week for another edition of Sports Spotlight.